Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years experience working primarily Monday to Friday in the financial services sector. I'm five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. So this is lesson one of the 101 series for AWS Glue. And we're going to look at the Glue Data Catalog and crawlers. So what is the Glue Data Catalog? The Glue Data Catalog acts as a central metadata repository within AWS. There's one per region and they can be shared between regions or accounts. But what is a metadata repository? So this is a location or a service where we store metadata about the underlying data we hold in AWS or other repositories that AWS can interact with, such as on-premise databases. But, but what is metadata information? Metadata information is information like location, schema structure, data type, even things like sensitivity or data owner can all be stored in the Glue Data Catalog. It's a foundational component of the AWS Glue ecosystem where it registers information about the data so then we can interact with it using other services. But how do we collate that metadata? So there's a couple of different options. One is you can manually add it. So you can go into the Glue console, go into the Glue Data Catalog and start adding information about where data is held, such as data resides in this S3 location. Here is the schema over the data that I want to place. And here's the owner of that data. However, AWS have also created a thing called a crawler. A crawler is a component of AWS Glue that crawls over the data location and infers that information back to the catalog, such as data types, schema structures, and even a name based on what you've actually called the table itself or the folder structure. But when do we use the AWS Glue Data Catalog? So that's a great question. It's a foundational component of the AWS Glue ecosystem. So it acts as that metadata location when we want to use other AWS services. So when do we use it? We use it when we want to use other AWS services such as Glue ETL, for example. So with Glue ETL, we want to move data from point A to point B and transform it. The Glue Data Catalog acts as a meta repository for us. It says, hey, all your data A is located here. It looks like this. And you want to go to B? Well, it looks like this and it's located here. You do the code in the middle and you insert these two points from the Glue Data Catalog and we'll get it from A to B. Other services that use the Glue Data Catalog? Athena. So we've got our data at point A or point B on an S3 bucket and we want to query that data, we go to Athena, Glue Data Catalog sits there, says this is the table, this is the location, this is your columns, that starts searching that data. Really, really efficient, cost effective, and lowers that barrier to entry. Another great example of the Glue Data Catalog is actually for security. So with AWS Lake Formation, and we cover this in the 101 Data Lake series on the channel, you can actually control access to who sees the underlying data. And that's done using the Glue Data Catalog. So you've got your tables and data locations registered in the Glue Data Catalog. And now you want to provision access to a user. You use Lake Formation to do that. Lake Formation hooks into the Glue Data Catalog and then assigns permissions to the user based on what it sees. So we've decided we're going to use the Glue Data Catalog, but how do we interact with it? So we've got a couple of options. First is the console that we're going to cover today. We can go in, set up crawlers, add things manually, and just do that entirely through the UI. There's obviously CloudFormation, where that's the inbuilt kind of infrastructure's code service from AWS. You can do um, table creation, database creation, crawler creation from CloudFormation. There's third-party things like Terraform that have modules that let you provision um, Glue Data Catalog tables and databases and crawlers again. Or you can use the APIs, such as straight off the CLI tools or the Boto3 library through Python. With that being said, the best way to learn is by doing. So let's go into the console in this first lesson. Let's ingest some data into an S3 bucket. Let's set up a crawler, crawl that data, and then get it added to the Glue Data Catalog. And then we can actually take a look around and see the different features hands-on because it's easier than me sitting talking through it on a video. So join me on the console. Okay guys, that's me logged in to the AWS Management Console. First thing we need to do is set up an S3 bucket that's going to act as our data repository for all the lessons. So let's go to S3 by typing in S3, clicking on the service, and then going to create bucket. 
So remember your bucket in AWS has to be unique globally for every bucket ever created. So I tend to use my name just because it's not that common a name. And then I'm gonna call this one demo glue uh, 101. So I'm gonna work out in the North Virginia region today. And that is everything I believe we wanna create the bucket. Okay, that's the bucket created. We're gonna do a couple of more things inside this bucket. The first one is we're gonna create a couple of folders. So create folder and we're gonna call this input. And we're gonna create that folder. The next one we're gonna call is output. So we're gonna create an output folder. And the third one we're going to call is Athena. This is a bit of a bonus we'll do in later lessons, but let's just create the folder now. So we have Athena results, create that folder. So we should have three folders now, input, output, and Athena results. So the input is where we're gonna put our input data, the data we're gonna upload in this lesson. And the output folder, it's gonna act as where we put our output. So when we do the ETL in the next lesson, we'll be using the output folder. So the next step is to get some data into the input folder. Now. In the description below, there's a link to my GitHub. Inside Glue 101, I have a couple of artifacts. One is customer.csv, which is going to be our data that we use for this entire series. And I've also included an architecture diagram that explains a little bit about what we're doing. I drew it myself. Um, I'm not the best artist, um, but I think it kind of gets the point across quite well. So I'm just gonna zoom out just a tiny little bit. And what we've done here in our S3 bucket at the moment is create input, and create output and I've put a dividing line down the bottom just so we can see what's going on. The next step is to upload that CSV data. So back on the GitHub, I'm just going to download this entire file as a zip. Down into my downloads, I'm gonna double click it so it opens and there she sits and we have all the artifacts. So back on to the S3 management console, input, so input into the input folder, that's really important. And then we want to create another folder before we upload the data. And this will act as our table. So let's just call this customers. And then let's hit create folder. Then inside that folder, let's upload the data that we just downloaded. So inside here, we go add files. And we add files as customer CSV. And we upload. And that's the data uploaded. So if we just close and we highlight, you can quickly take a look at this data by using query with S3 select. So just to leave everything as default and hit run query. And you can see that our first five rows are brought back for us. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go over to AWS Glue now, what we all came here for. So over on AWS Glue, first thing we're going to do is create a database. So on the left hand side here is our navigation plane. We have databases, tables, connections, crawlers, schema registries, settings, the whole ETL group down here, security, and there's even tutorials on how to add a crawler, how to add a job that we're going to cover in this lesson. So up at the top, we go to databases. This is going to be our database and I'm going to call it input. So a database is just a logical place that you put tables that go together. So this will be where we put our input tables and we only have one of them. That's our database created, input, simple as that. Now, if I just load up the diagram quickly again, you can see that we need to create a crawler to register this CSV in the Glue Data Catalog. So as we spoke about at the start of this video, crawlers go over the data in first schema and register it with the Glue Data Catalog. So back on the AWS console, we'll go to crawlers and we go to add crawler by either clicking this or up here. So I'll click up here. Okay, give your crawler a name. I'm gonna call this demo glue 101. You can call your crawler anything you want as long as it abides by the naming conventions. Uh, we're gonna crawl a data store. We're gonna crawl all folders. This option is kind of interesting. If you're working with a lot of big data, you can crawl new folders only so you don't keep crawling old folders. Um, a crawler actually scans all the data in your files to infer the schema. So if you keep rescanning the same data and it's not changing, it's a bit of a waste of money. But for the purpose of this lesson, we've only got one folder, so we're just gonna call it all folders. Next, yep, we're S3. It's a path in our account, so we need to include that path. So if you go find the bucket that you created and you go to the input location, 
we're going to crawl this input location but actually i just want the customer table so we're going to set it up over customers so we're going to crawl the whole way down into customers and hit select then we're going to go next do we want to add another data store the answer is no we need a role so we are just going to create a new role for this so i'm going to call this glue 101 uh crawler and i'm just going to put delete on the end so i remember to delete it so as you can see it's going to have the permissions to scan that location and infer schema let's go next schedule leave run on demand we'll come back to this in the third lesson when we look at triggers so let's click next database is input and prefix i'm just going to add csv to the front of it so our table is going to be prefixed with csv and that's just to make it more clear what the data type is next and finish and your crawler should be created so now i just highlight it and run crawler so the crawler is off and running this can take 60 seconds to three minutes i'm going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up once it's done okay as you can see that took about 56 seconds in total runtime but it actually took slightly longer than that because there's a start phase and a stop phase so i think it was about two minutes in total um, if you get stuck there is logs here to click and you can go and debug the crawler of the issues but if you followed along the same steps that i've done you'll get to this um, stage and everything will be completed successfully now as you can see a table has been added so that we, we got our one table back now to view this table we'll go in the long way so you go databases database that's called input tables and input and as you can see we have our csv customer table now if we click on that table you can see that there's a lot of information and this is the power of a crawler so as you can see it knows that we're in a text output format here you it knows that our columns are ordered it knows that there's 998 records up here it knows to skip the first line because that's actually the column names it also knows as you can see that it's a delimiter and it knows that it's a file type so it's a lot of information just infer inferred by the actual crawler itself and as you can see this is actually what it used to parse the file and then if we scroll down a little bit you can see that it's picked up all the column names in our file and it's inferred data type so that's just out of the box functionality by aws so in recap of what we've done today we have created this s3 bucket in the middle we have created these input and output folders we've created a customer folder inside input we've uploaded the csv data we've ran a crawler over it and we've registered that table with the glue data catalog so as a bonus we can actually view this data in athena now this isn't part of glue itself so feel free to go on to the second lesson now or follow along and we can actually look at this data in aws so if we go to the top and we type in athena and I'm just going to open it in a new tab to keep things separate. We can go to get started. And as it's the first time that we've been in here, you need to set up a query location. So that can be done here or via settings. So if you click settings, query and these query result location. If we go to the bucket that we set up, we set up that third folder at the start that was just a bonus folder. So we're going to go into it. And we hit select and we hit save. As you can see the glue data catalog has automatically been set as our data source so let's just type a query and get some data back so if i go select star from now there's only i can't remember what it's saying 900 rows in this data 998 rows so we're just going to bring it all back uh select star from and then we want the input database so that's input then we want a dot and then we want two commas and then sorry then we want two quotes and then it's csv understood customers for my table name so just to recap if no one knows what sql is that's the language that we're using sql structured query language select star means give me everything from the input database input database dot is then when we go to the next object which is csv underscore customers which is csv underscore customers so what this query is saying is give me all data from the csv customers table in the input database this happens occasionally with Athena. Um, it's a bug where the run query doesn't appear. So if you just refresh after you set up your S3 bucket, it now appears. Just a bug in the UI that's still there about six months on. Hit run. 
And you can see we have brought back all that data. Oh, I hit the wrong button there. I've brought back all that data that we were looking at in the in the first instance. Uh, if you scroll down, probably easier to see. And then you've got a scroll bar left and right as well. So that's a bonus with Athena. I'll put lesson two now um, as a link above again, or and it'll be in the description. So feel free to move on to lesson two. And we'll look at actually doing some ETL on this data. We're going to change it from CSV into Parquet. See you in the next lesson.